Good morning, everybody. <laughs> it's Sunday, it's 10 a.m. We're going live again, like we always go live. And uh, making a YouTube video that we'll edit going live on YouTube, and then we're going live on Amazon Live. So uh, I think we're featuring the Bob Ross 2 inch brush you can get for like 15 bucks. It's the best brush that I've found to be able to use to blend the paint. I'm going to start off with what we have here. We've got Magic Fly and Bob Ross colors. Starting with the Bob Ross colors, we have the uh, Dark Sienna, Phthalo Green, Sat Green, Alizarin Crimson, the Prussian Blue, the darker color blue, uh, Midnight Black, Titanium White, I love this Thalo Green, it always drips, and uh, Yellow Ochre, and then for our Magic Fly colors, we have Lemon Yellow, the Yellow Green, Magenta Pink, Purple, uh, the Orange Red, the, I can't even remember, it's like the brightest red that they have, and then the, <coughs> the Cobalt Blue. <clears throat> no matter how much I talk during the morning to try to prepare my voice for these videos, they're <laughs> it's always real deep when we start. So, we've already covered the canvas, Bob Ross liquid white. Uh, you just want a very thin coat, you just want to be able to see your fingerprint on there. And I'm going to paint this kind of green, spooky sort of scene with some lake, green sky, mountains, trees. So if you're interested in painting any of those things, then uh, we're going to get right to it. Firstly, can I show you guys? Check this out. We made it into print, people. We're in a literal magazine with all of these paintings that I do. My whole backstory is in this article. So if you want to read the article, uh, you can buy a painting. I'm shipping signed copies of these out with each, with the first like 20 paintings. You get a signed copy of this magazine. Besides that, if you don't live in my neighborhood, you might not see it. So we'll uh, get started right away. Gonna use our little cup technique. You can find a Dixie cup or a coffee cup or a big plastic cup or something that you're willing to get a little bit of paint on, and we're gonna start by making a little moon in the sky, okay? And how I like to do that is you get to see the uh, Bob Ross Thalo green, right? The kind of sea colored green. And we're just gonna pick a spot for our moon. And let's say the moon lives like right up here. We're gonna hold the cup onto the canvas very firmly and just go around the cup, right? Reach underneath, come around this way. Try not to let those bristles sneak underneath the cup and then bam, you get this perfect circle. And then you can go throw your cup away or save it or, you know, save it for your next painting. And we're just gonna take this stuff, we're gonna pull it out. And you can see as we pull it out, it gets lighter in color, right? That's the Bob Ross liquid white. We want that stuff because it helps all these thick oil paints blend. If you were just to put this on a, on a dry canvas, as Bob would, would say all the time, you'd be in agony city, because it just does not blend the way that it's supposed to. And the technique doesn't work without this liquid clear, uh, liquid white on the canvas, and it just makes everything nice and slick, okay? So we're gonna take that, and just sort of drag it out. You can do your whole sky in phthalo green if you wanted to. But for me, I, you guys know I like my depth and differences in color, right? I'm always saying that. Differences in color. So we're going to get the sat green. We're going to put that around here, just anywhere on this big old 18 by 24 inch canvas. Some of the times the bigger the canvas that you use, the more forgiving it can be. Right, you know, uh, less experienced painters will think, you know, I don't want to go for a big canvas that's sort of intimidating to me, right? This is so big. A lot of times it's easier, to me anyway, than painting on a on a smaller canvas. Smaller canvas, you have less room for air, less room for those happy little accidents, right? And since we're happy little landscapes, we love happy little accidents around here. So we're gonna throw some more of that phthalo green. You can tell the differences in green. All right, we're not really blending anything in, just kind of putting it onto the canvas. And then down here, we're going to throw our water in, right? I'm just going to pull from the side. Still haven't washed the brush. I'm a lazy painter. I do not like washing my brush all the time. So, we like to show you guys paintings where you don't have to wash your brush constantly, right? We cover the edges, because we always cover the edges. You can't have an unfinished painting with no paint on the sides, right? Nobody wants that. So your buyer buys it and then it's going to hang it, you know, right as they're coming down the stairs. I've done it from experience. I've, you know, I have paintings in our 
in our cabin where you start to walk down the stairs and you can see the white top because I forgot to do it and it just looks unfinished. So always finish the sides. I don't know how many times I've said that here on YouTube. You guys can also find me on Facebook. We're not doing a Facebook Live today, but I do have a Facebook and an Instagram and everything else. So facebook.com slash happy landscape art and you'll be able to find me over there. Some of that phthalo green and the sap green over on this side. And I want to leave like a little bit of this wider area right underneath where our moon is. So it's not so, you know, such as dark as the rest of them. I just can't even speak today. And not talk today. We want this sort of lighter, whitish area, and it almost looks like the reflection of the moon down into the water, right? Everybody likes painting water, except for me. And when I was uh, when I was an early on a beginner kind of painter, I would paint water into almost everything. And then the the more kind of experienced I got, the less water we painted, and started to do more detailed stuff. I'll take a little bit of that midnight black. Throw that in up around the, the top, just in different places. You don't need to do the whole thing. It doesn't need to be super dark. All right, I'm going to cover the top. So bear with me. Let's see. While we're doing this, we can talk about uh, Maria's, uh, her, uh, <laughs> and I'm all over the place today, babe. Maria's uh, fundraiser that we're doing, right? I've sent her like 10 of my paintings. Uh, she's having a fundraiser for the surgery that she's having, and you know the insurance never covers everything. So she needs to raise about three thousand more dollars. So on May fifteenth, uh, you can follow my pages and follow her page at Sip with two P's S I P P S A S S by Mia, and you'll be able to find the uh, the event where we're going to hold this online art auction. You can buy my pieces, you can buy, you know, I think it's up to like 20 different artists have donated stuff. Oh, there we go. Get in there. So if you want to get some really cool art and help somebody out at the same time, go uh, check it out on May 15th. And as it gets closer, we'll post more things about it. Hmm. Alright, now that we've got our, our little light area down here, got our sky all blended in, Take this and just grab some of that thick paint that's around the side. And just let that brush rotate like that, right? Now we're gonna get our big two-inch brush, which you can find on my Amazon shop, my Amazon influencer account, right? Amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. What we're gonna do is we're just start to blend these together. Just push them real hard into the canvas, blending all these colors together so you can't kind of tell where the one color starts and one color stops, right? moon. Well, and that happens, the last thing you want to do is go inside and touch the moon. So be very careful when you're coming along on that side. Now we have this very spooky sort of nighttime, maybe Lord of the Rings-ish style sort of uh, sky up here. Blend those in, pull this out. Just make it so you can't really tell where the colors start and stop, but you can still tell you have different colors of green and black and everything up inside your sky there. Makes it look really neat. I've sold about four of these, this you know style of painting with the green sky. People seem to love it. So if you're trying to sell a painting, do a lot of different colors and uh, you know follow my tutorial. It'll help you get better at the things that you're struggling with. Oh, son of a butt. There we go. We'll take some clouds and throw them over there anyway. And what I'm going to do for those clouds is mix a little bit of the blue and the black right on the brush. Still haven't washed the brushes yet. We're going to pull them straight down like this and just kind of wiggle as we go down. All right, that's going to make like a knife-like edge to our one-inch brush over here. And we can come in and since we messed up our moon, we might as well go over this sucker a little bit. Just like that. Just by dabbing, right? Dabbing it. Dab it in, sort of leave some spaces in between. Come over and just make your clouds just a big old mess. That's what we do around here. We make a mess with our clouds. And then we'll kind of show you how to make it look realistic, right? And one over here. You don't have to cover the whole sky in clouds. You just want something up there. 
wash all that thick paint off of that brush. For you guys that don't know, you my fans should know by now, we have our beater bucket, looks a lot like this. Just a five gallon bucket with a golf ball basket down in the bottom, which just gives me a surface to kind of beat the devil out of this brush without spraying it all over my house like Bob Ross does, right? I'm gonna dry that off a bit. Yeah, I'm on a paper towel and I'm gonna come up here. You can tell it's not fully clean, right? Still got a bunch of paint on there. And we're gonna come up here, we're just gonna very lightly, very lightly start making our little patented Josh circles, right? I'm gonna come up here and just literally make a mess. Make a mess onto our canvas. And we get these nice dark shadowy clouds up in the sky. Nice and soft. Take our two-inch brush, swipe up, and to the side, try not to hit your moon too much. Over there, over there. Swipe, and you can leave them these dark shadowy clouds just like that, or you can add white to them, or different highlights, if you wanted to. I might want like one more in here. You can see how we're leaving It'll leave spaces of, of sky in between. You don't want all your clouds piled on top of each other. It makes it look like you have no depth to your painting, right? Gotta have depth. Gotta start from the very back and we'll work our way forwards, right? So the closer we get, the darker things will get and the bigger and taller they'll become, right? Something like that. Swipe across just very soft. They don't all have to be the same color black. You don't want them to be the same color black. This one right here seems a bit darker than the rest of them, which is fine. Got going over our moon like that. And it's starting to look really good. Only using a few tools today. You can find all the tools on amazon.com slash shop slash head landscape art. Right? And if you wanted to buy this painting or any of my paintings or the hats or the shirts or the pillows and everything else that I offer, you can go to etsy.com slash shop slash head landscape art. Okay, so to make our mountain, we're gonna do a little bit of Prussian blue. Blizzard and Crimson and Midnight Black. And we're just gonna mix up this whole dark pile of paint. Like a chunk of old, old paint in there. Don't need that sticking out of our mountain. <clears throat> Don't need a whole lot of paint for this pile. Depends on the size of your mountain, really. How big you wanna do it, how big your canvas is. Mine's pretty large, so we're gonna, we're gonna make a sort of a big mountain. We're gonna grab up, scoop up a little bit of that right on the edge of the knife. You don't have to have the Bob Ross knives. You can find them at amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. When I first started, I was using the plastic knife that you could get at Michael's. And it seemed to work better for me than these did until I got a little bit more, you know, comfortable with the knife and how to use it. So I'm gonna scoop up a little bit of paint and why not we can come up here and just make this giant mountain chain. And just remember, your, the tip tops of your mountains don't always have to be this triangle shape. We want them to be irregular. It's never, we're not painting pyramids up here, guys. We're painting mountains. And some of the times, mountains are kind of round at the top. Some of the times they're pointy. They're never the perfect shape. So don't worry about getting it right or getting it perfect because it doesn't need to be. And we don't have to come all the way to the side. And I always tell myself that you don't have to go to the edge because once we take our our uh, brush and start to blend all this stuff out, that's when we're going to push it to the edge, right? So again, when I was a younger painter, less experienced, I would take this and go all the way side to side and you, didn't, you really don't have to do that. I'm gonna scrape off the rest of that stuff and just put it in random places. Right? Just make, literally make a mess. Everyone tries to be too too perfect, right? You don't have to have it perfect. You don't want it to be perfect. Actually, I might want this side to come up like a little bit higher. Watch, watch how we're going to change our whole, our whole lay of our land, right? We're going to come up like this. And just bam, now there's a bigger, taller bit of mountain that lives up here. Your painting does not have to look like my painting. Remember that as well. You're never going to get the same amount of paint on your knife or the paint on your brush, put a little bit of imperfection right in there. That's true, we just changed the whole, the whole deal. We're gonna want these much taller. We'll come down in here.
literally doesn't matter what you do. Your painting is going to look awesome no matter what. All right, let's come up here. And that's why I like doing these clouds. You got to do your clouds first because then you can push them back behind your mountains and do whatever you want to do. Okay, we're going to scrape off that paint just so there's only a small amount of it there, just in different places. Scrape it all off. And I mean, now that we've got enough paint, we can make a whole other mountain if we wanted to, right? So we're going to save that in. Put it over here on the palette, underneath our dark colors, and we're going to save it. No need to get rid of it. We'll eventually use it somewhere. Now we're going to take our one-inch brush again, or the two-inch brush, whatever's easier for you. And we're going to grab our mountain, and we're only worried about what the top edge looks like, right? And the further we come down, the less we touch. So you can kind of pull it away from the canvas, and you'll get this nice sort of soft edge down around the bottom. Maybe this bit of mountain comes this way. And there's like a ridge in here. Right? Might not, that might be hard for you guys to see right now, but the way that you pull your mountains out will sort of tell you how you can highlight it, just based off of your brush strokes. Okay, pull those out. We don't want it to get too big, so don't be pushing too hard when you go to pull these out. Right? Maybe this guy comes down, cuts in front of that guy, goes over here. Again, you guys might not be able to see all the differences in brush strokes and the different angles that we're going in, right? But when you do yours, you will. And that will tell you where you can add your highlights, right? Where you can put your snow, where you can put your dirt. If you don't want a snowy mountain, you can do a dirt-covered mountain and use the brown or whatever you want to do. Right? And we got this nice little mountain chain, a lot bigger than we first expected. And that's why we do our clouds first, right? Push them way back into the distance. We're only worried about what the top edge looks like. Nothing else down here matters. Right? You can put a thing down there. It literally doesn't matter what you do. You can always cover. Can't cover going back up. It's hard to fix when you start going from bottom to top. But when you're coming down from the top, you can fix anything. You get this bit down here that comes around. And it's just it's got the shadowy area. It's looking really good. Take our two-inch brush now and just sort of dab it in and come up like this. We're just making this area right down here nice and soft and foggy. What I'm almost doing is just taking those bristles and just spreading them out, kind of blending the paint a little bit. All right, we're going to come in, do our little Josh patented circles, right? No one else that paints ever does circles, so we're going to patent this as a Josh patented circle. Now we got this nice foggy area. Our mountain's just sort of floating out of the middle of nowhere. And we have this lighter line right down here underneath where we can add trees or details or just leave it fog if you wanted to, literally. Do whatever you want to do. It's nice and soft, back and forth. Remember, don't go too much over this area that's sort of whitish. That's going to be our, our reflection in our sky. I really like the way this one's coming out, actually. Which you hear me say that over and over and over again. Usually, there's, there's a few paintings that you do that, you do that I don't like, you know, that I'll end up doing that I just don't like how they came out. And it just irritates me. And those are the paintings that end up selling the fastest, you would, if you would believe it. Some of my best, some of my quote unquote best paintings are still hanging up in my house. <laughs> And some of my worst paintings have gone and sold off, in my opinion, anyway. Some of the worst paintings have already gone. All right, we're going to decide, we're start making some decisions here about where our light lives, how we're going to shadow this mountain. We're going to do a little bit of white with our, our dark paint over here to make this lighter color gray. That could be the shadows. Or we could skip that idea. We could make this our shadows, right? Take a little bit of that dark. Mix it in with the stable of green and white over here. And now we've got this difference in the shadow color. We'll take our shadows. If our moon's over there, I'm expecting all of our shadows to be on this side. So we'll pull it down over here. And you can see how we're holding the knife. <clears throat> Very lightly holding the knife, right? We're not like gripping it really hard, scraping through the paint. Just very lightly holding it. And just touching and pulling quickly. You don't want to do it slow. 
right? Do it slow, it's not gonna work. Do it fast. Be brave, and do it quickly, right? And that'll help the paint break. You want the paint to break so you look like you have, you know, little bits of rocks that didn't get covered by the snow, different stuff like that. Basically, right underneath where our, our peaks are is where you can put your shadows, right? You don't want to do the whole thing in shadow. You don't want to do the whole thing in highlights either. I think on this side, our shadows go, you know, we'll do them on the same, we'll do them on the same thing over here. Put them on that side. Do all your shadows on your left side, right? And then we'll throw the light in from the right. And it'll end up looking fantastic no matter what you do. Kind of comes down here and go that way. Just be random. And the reason why we do our shadows first, sometimes if it gets too thick, scrape it off, redo it again. Drop it down in there. You get all these nice thick breaks, right? But we do our shadows first, especially for beginner paintings, because it's easier to come back in with your highlights and cover over your shadows versus doing all your highlights first and then having to come back and just sneak in a couple shadows here and there, right? Take our white paint like that, kind of decide how our mountain is going to live. Just straight up titanium white. And when you paint with Josh, you use a lot of white paint. Because I love doing thick, thick textured mountains, right? I actually might have to go back to the box and get some more white paint. We'll do some down on this side. We've got this little bit, it's never a straight line, right? You don't want to have a straight line on your mountain. There, see this guy comes in front, comes down like that. There's a little bit. You never, you never know until you do it, right? So do it. Try something. If you don't like it, you can always scrape it off. You can curse me out. You can be like, man, Josh did told me to do this thing and it didn't work. Well, guess what? At least you learned something about what not to do next time, right? I'm constantly learning with these paintings. You know what works, what doesn't work. See where I would jiggle the knife sort of up and down like that, just making, literally making a mess. It's all you do when you paint, is just make a mess onto the canvas. And if you do it in the right way, you end up look, you know, having something really fantastic. But it doesn't all have to look the same. If you go look at a mountain covered in snow, it's never the same color. There's shadows, there's bright areas, there's areas of, you know, rocks that didn't get covered. There's big, thick globs of snow, right? It's just, it's just the same thing, it's just a mess. Nature is a mess. And just don't go over it too much, right? The more and more you go over it, the more you're gonna kind of smash those little, those little breaks and the cool little textured areas of our painting. The more you go, the more you're gonna mess it up. So be gentle. Just take a little bit of this white down here. Just put it down around the bottom, just in random places, right? Doesn't matter if you go this way or whatever. We're just gonna make some fog out of this white. Some of that, just really mush it in. Mush it in there. Mush. I tell my daughter, I'm trying to teach her how to paint. Mush it. You're just gonna mush it in there, right? We're gonna come back with our two-inch brush and we're gonna we're gonna do these little dabs. Dabbing it. Everything with Josh is a dab. I think I should have been a dancer. We're gonna come down, we're gonna come up. You don't want your fog all in this very straight line, right? So we're gonna come up and down in different places, kind of like a heartbeat monitor. All right, come up like that, and then we'll come down. Again, we're pulling, as we dab, we're going down in the direction that our mountain is kind of sloping down that way, right? You can come up as high or as low as you want. And then as we come over here, we're gonna turn the brush, and we're gonna come down this way. And that just creates more depth filled fog. So now we have lighter areas and darker areas of our fog over here. We're just very lightly just kind of disturb what that fog looks like. Right? And poof. We got this floating mountain out in the middle of nowhere. Right? There's all this fog around the bottom. Cool. I'm thinking our water line is going to be down around here. So why don't we throw another little section. Do another little bit of mountain. Maybe comes down. We've got this
this ridge that comes all the way down to our, our water line, right? Okay, like that. It's the best part about painting to me, too. You can always fix it, you can adjust something. See that ridge connects, we got some dead over here. I'm gonna pull it down to our water. Now, just by doing that, sort of flattening it out along where we think our, our horizon line is. Now we've sort of pushed these bits of mountain back and we've got a little bit of mountain down underneath. Take some of that shadowy colored paint that we had. Put along the edge here, just in random places again. Doesn't need to be super dark, doesn't need to be all crazy. Just randomly throw it in there. Come back with our white, and then we can start to decide how we want it to look. This side comes over here, shoots off that way, bam. Again, you gotta do it fast if you want this snow to break. Let's put a little bit of that blue on this side over here. Just so we have a difference in color. A little bit different when our mountain came down. That's that bit. And you can just sit here and play with it until it ends up looking how you want it to look. And that was really fun to me because you can always go back in with your dark colors back into your shadows and just throw a few little dark areas over our darker shadows, right? Just helps everything pop a little bit more and you get all this depth. You know, there's some real deep, dark bits back there where this, this moonlight just cannot reach. But you don't want to overdo it. It starts to look so neat. I'm like, oh, yeah, look at that. And then you end up having this whole dark mountain and you can't really do much with it. Get some of that over here. Again, you don't have to go all the way to the side. The, the light is just struggling so hard to make it all the way over to this side of the canvas, right? This little bit of light, and the light from the moon's coming down to lighten up this little ridge over here. Lighten up the ridge. Let me take some of this dark down in here. It's just helping our eyes decide where the light is coming from. That's all it's doing. All right, come in, make a little bit of darker bit of fog out of that. Come on to this side, same thing. And all it's doing is softening the paint up in this area for our next layer, right? We can put a couple big old trees or something there. Taking this, kind of pulling it out. And then bam, now we've changed the look of our land and everything else just by adding that one little extra bit of mountain that's coming down in front of everything, right? And you can keep playing like that for hours. You can find, you know, like, okay, there might be another little bit over here. Right? It never has to be exactly how it looks. Just go slow, sort of figure out where you want the light to come from and what you want it to look like, right? It's all about what you want it to look like. It doesn't matter what mine looks like. It doesn't matter what your friends look like. Or this painter or that painter. However you want it to look is how it's going to look. And it's going to look great. A little bit of dark down in here to separate these guys. Now we've got these, and remember, you see the different angles, I'm pulling this way, I'm pulling that way, we're going this way, we're doing every way except for up, right? <laughs> we're not gonna go up with it. We're gonna do every other angle. Come down, a little bit more. That's not dark enough for me. All right, you can take that dark and just throw it in in different spots of your, of your mountain as you're coming down. Go back over it. Get these differences in color, guys. That's all we're looking for. A little bit different color. Help that bright really stand out with this dark. And then we get this real thick, real dark, real textured bit of mountain back here. Man. Things just jumping out the canvas at us, right? All these different colors, different shadows, different everything in this painting. And it's looking really good. Then we're gonna come back in, just sort of drag that down just a little bit, right? 
swipe up like this from the bottom in the direction that we laid the shadows down. So you can see my brush rotating back and forth like this, like a metronome. And all that does is really kind of soften up what the bottom looks like. And then we can come back in with our fog. Higher, lower, higher, lower, higher, lower. And never having this straight line just like that, right? <clears throat> Looks fantastic. All right, call it a day. We're done. See you guys later. Floating mountain, force it not All right, we're going to take our fan brush here. First, let's mix up a little bit more of our, uh, call it our tree colored paint. It's the same color paint as the mountain. Just a different hue, right? A different shade. And that's what I mean by your, your painting will never look the same. I can't even paint the same painting over and over and over again. And I've painted like 400 paintings, right? So don't worry about what yours looks like compared to mine. You'll never mix up the exact same amount of crimson and blue and black that I do. So therefore, it will not be the same color when you go to put it on here. But don't worry. You will figure it out. Right, big old glob of paint. Nice and mixed up. And then we can come in and we're gonna decide maybe there's a little bit of like far off forest somewhere at the base of that mountain. We're gonna drag our paint, our brush right down through the paint like that, wiggling it. Come in and maybe on this side, we're just gonna pop up a couple little, little bits of trees way off here in the distance. All right, staying in the line of our fog. You come up too high, you're gonna start mixing with all this thick paint up here. If you go down too low, you don't start high enough, it's not going to look right. All right, we're going to come down into our water like this. I'm going to show you. And that's going to be our island. I'm going to come back in, load the paint up, uh, load the brush up with paint, and I'm going to come down, throw a couple, couple little trees on our island, right? What I'm doing is holding the brush. You can see how I hold the brush, right? Uh, study how. Everyone holds their brush. Everyone holds it differently. But if you want to have a nice pointy top, right? You don't want to have your bristles at the top of your tree growing out as, at the width of your brush. So hold it on the edge, use the corner. Touch up, touch up, touch up, touch up. And then as you come down, that's when you can rotate around and have all your bristles touching like that. <clears throat> So we'll put like a little smaller guy, maybe he's on an angle like this, he's about to fall off the island and into the water. And we'll go like that. Totally up to you what you want your island to look like. And then we can even take, just do like a little couple little bushes off the side over here. Totally up to you. You can even take if you wanted to and do your trees all the way down. Yeah, just very messy, right? So all we're doing is literally making a mess onto the kid. Now we can take our brush, pull out some land a little bit, and give us some area to work with our our uh, water line. Take these ones, just come straight down with them, just very lightly though, very lightly. You push too hard, and you're gonna just drag this whole big bit of paint down there. Right? Come across. Now we've got this bit. You can see all these differences in colors, the lights, the darks. You can still see the, the reflection of the moon coming around the, the little island back there, right? Now we're going to come in and we're going to decide where our land meets the water. Do the liquid white, start on the edge, just push hard and cut it in there, right? Again, it doesn't have to connect. You don't want it to be the same on each side. You can have differences because it's never 100% the same ripples all the way around the edge of your little island. Right? Water is a very messy thing as well. It doesn't have to be the same. Let's see. We can even throw something back in here too. Maybe our island didn't come over far enough. So watch this, we can add more forest, right? You can literally do whatever you want. I'm showing you guys that it never has to be the same. You don't have to just live with it. Like, oh, I didn't do that all the way over there. So I guess it's just gonna have to be like that. No, no, no. You can do whatever you wanna do. And 
the same thing. Take our brush. Now we gotta be careful because we're in this, you know, we're not gonna try to touch everything back here. Drag it down a bit more, look to the side. much the same. We don't want it to be the same. Come back, swipe these guys, the water line, but it's not the same thickness, it's not the same brightness all the way across the painting, right? So remember, you can always change or add or do anything you want to do, never has to look the same all the time. Or if you make a mistake, you can always go back and fix it, right? That's what we're all about, showing you how to sort of fix what you think is wrong with it. Let's wash off this brush. We haven't washed the brushes in a little while. Get some of that thick paint off of there. You can find the same kind of brush cleaner I use. It's Jasco Brush Cleaner. You can find it on Amazon.com slash shop slash Hacking Landscape Art. And uh, it's the exact same stuff that, that I have and that I use, right? If that's what you want to do. What we're going to do now is get a little bit of our liquid light right into our little green piles over here, right? You can mix them together. Mine are real close on the palette. I don't have one of those giant palettes like these other YouTube painters. So you got to work with what you have, right? You can use a paper plate. You can use multiple paper plates. <laughs> you can do whatever you want to do. So, but a little bit of green, a little bit of white right on the edge. And we're going to come over here. Just the same thing with our, the corner of our brush. Just going to touch. We're not really pushing in hard, right? Just barely touching it because you want that little bit of paint just to stick to the thick paint back there, right? We're gonna come over here, same thing. A little bit of touching. And whatever sticks, sticks. Don't force it. And as you come down, stay dark. Don't do too much. It's brighter at the top than it is down at the bottom. Wash off that paint. Now we're getting started to get a little bit of color here in our painting, you guys. Now what I really like is a little bit of the yellow ochre in these little bushes, right? So we're gonna get that half inch or the half size round Bob Ross brush. It's like this little foliage brush. I'm gonna dab it in and we're gonna come back and just add a little bit of color in different places. You don't wanna do it the same all over the place. fiery little spit of red bush in there somewhere, right? Maybe up in here. And all we're doing is just touching, just barely touching. Whatever sticks is going to stick, whatever doesn't, just let it, let it do what it wants. You're only going to start making mud when you start to force it. And if you're forcing it, it just doesn't want to go sometimes. It doesn't want to do what you want it to do, right? A little bit of purple went right in front of that yellow bush back there. Wipe that off. A little bit more liquid white, not a lot. These oil, these Magic Fly paints are a lot thinner than the Bob Ross paints, so you don't need a lot of liquid white because they're already thin enough to stick. All right, let's do a little bit of pink, a little fiery spit of pink bush over there. Like a hat. Now we've got, what, four or five different colors all right in this one little section which is gonna draw your eye to all this color. Go back up in here to our, our green. Go like two or three swipes through the dark with the green. And then come back in and just add a little bit of grassy area along the edge of our shoreline, right? Maybe a little bit comes up. Comes over there. Just literally making a mess on the canvas and it'll turn into something really great, you guys. And then we do a little bit of a little bit of reflection down in here. You can always pull it, you can always fix it, so don't worry. Try to match our colors down here. A little bit of pink, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of purple, and a little bit of that red, right? Just very messy blobs right down here at the bottom. And we can come in. The more you go over it, the more you're going to get rid of those colors, so be very careful. Blend it out, throw it to the side. Don't worry about 
after water line, you can always come back. Come back in, fix that water line. You know what looks really cool? You take a little bit of dark and you throw it in with your water. I always like that. It just adds a little bit more depth to my paintings. If I have a little bit of dark in there, and a little bit of light. That's why they call these things knives, because you literally cut them in. Cut it into your canvas, back and forth, pushing hard against the canvas. You're not going to cut the canvas, so don't worry about that. Okay, very straight lines. Except for our water. Our water, <laughs> our water is very messy, right? Okay. Might have to use the big bomb brush foliage brush for these bushes on the side, right? You can do a couple giant trees. You can do whatever you want to do. You can do a big like sticky tree. Totally up to you guys what we want to do. Or what you want to do anyway. But I love that we have all these different colors, these different lights. You can see around the edge where this white that we left sort of, you know, unpainted is kind of reflecting the moon down there. We got the reflections from all the trees. All these little bits of just very lightly different bit of color right underneath the colors that we have. I mean, who knows? Maybe we could throw some big bushes along the side. We could literally do whatever we wanted to do. We have tons and tons of paint. You can take some of our brown, come in here and just every so often take a little bit of tree trunk, just the littlest bit. And all it's doing is when someone goes to look at your painting, they're gonna go, oh yeah, there's a bit of trunk in there, right? Holding up all that tree. You don't have to do it. You can do it before your highlights, but you don't want to have a lot of trunk showing. Scrape in a couple of little sticks and stuff, holding this stuff up down here. Like that, like so. You can do a reed. Just pull it straight up through your water line like that. And you get a little bit of reed growing up out of the water. Again, totally up to you what you want to do. Alright, we're gonna make up some more of our tree color. Alright, throw a little bit of green in there. Phthalo green too, a little bit of the brown. All the dark colors, so we'll just make this giant pile of dark colored paint. Big old pile. Have you ever looked at Bob Ross's piles of paint? That, I mean, it's like the size of a fist on his canvas. And it's like that, because on his palette, sorry. It's like that because you need a lot of paint to get this textured look. And it's easier, the thicker that your shadow colors are, the easier your highlight colors will stick to them. And then if you look at your painting from the side, you'll have all these little bits that come off of it. It looks really neat, really detailed. <clears throat> so we'll take our big brush again, go right down through that dark paint, just loading the brush up, right? Tons and tons and tons of paint. And why not? Let's do, well, we'll do something different on that side. No, you know what? I don't want a big, I want a big tree over here. So we're going to take this. In order to be closer to us, it's got to be taller than our mountain, right? So we're going to have, maybe we'll put it about right here. And just drag this big sucker all the way down. And you're like, oh no, Josh, what did you just do, right? It was looking so good, and you went and did that. We're going to come, we're going to touch with the corner, just depositing all this very thick paint all the way down. Sort of going in this z shape motion as we go down, just very, very slight. Back, load it up with some more, and the closer we come down, the bigger our branches are going to get down to the bottom, right? The bigger they become. And again, you want them to be very thick. You want your brush to sort of stick to them as you pull it away. You want your brush to almost feel like it's stuck there because it's stuck to all that thick paint. Don't have to worry too much about the bottom down here. Go in and grab a little bit of our white, a little bit of that brown. Since this tree's a little bit closer, it's gonna have a brighter colored trunk, right? Come back and just touch every so often. Just pull to the side, touch and pull. And the further we get down, obviously the thicker the trunk is gonna to be to hold up this big old tree. But we're not gonna see the whole thing, so don't worry about it anymore.
Just like that. We got this monster sized tree. What's it look like on the camera over here? It's really good, actually. Some people watching. Take this over here, make it real sharp up to the top. Just like that. Now we got a tip top to our tree over there, and we'll put some big old bushes down there on the bottom. Scoop up all that paint that we flattened out. I'm gonna come in with this big Bob Ross foliage brush, right? I like to just dab it into the onto the palette like that, and you get it nice and thick into your brush, or you can scoop it up. Just you want it nice and thick and piled up high on your brush right here. Then we'll come in here and just make these big, thick, giant bush bits down there on the bottom. Very thick paint. Time to go put our little highlight colors on there. There's something for it to stick to, right? Come out around the edge, get all these cool little bits just with the brush doing it on its own. Don't really have to do much for it. nice thick base we can come back in with all of our highlight colors again with our liquid white and our smaller brush and just sort of create these bushes how we think they're going to live. A little bit more liquid white, we're going to change color and go with our purple this time. All right. bam, 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 bam. You don't want to cover up all your dark spaces in between your colors or go all the way to the bottom. You want the bottom to be dark. that magenta, kind of deepish, darkish red color down here. Just slightly touching in different places, right? And look at what happens when you do that. Get all these beautiful little bits of color and texture, and every, that's just what's amazing. It's amazing. And yours will always look different, right? You can never do the same thing on the same bit. So it will always be slightly different than it was before. Let's put a little bit of green and yellow in here. Just in different spots, but we're not going to go all the way to the bottom. So don't worry about that. You want it to be nice and dark down here so you have some places for your sticks to show through. Just in different spots, just like so. We can take the bottom of this and pull it out, give us a little bit of land that everything's sitting on down here. But again, it doesn't have to be the same, it doesn't have to be a straight line across, you can do literally whatever you want to do. A little bit of liquid white, we'll come in, like a little bit of water line just around the edges of our, our little island over here. Maybe it's two islands, maybe the whole thing, you never know what's happening. Never know what's happening. All right, we're going to come back in on this side. A little bit of blue, black, crimson again. Maybe a little bit of green, a little phthalo, a little Van Dyke, or a dark sienna brown, right? Or burnt umber, whatever paint you're using. It always has a different color, a different name, but it's the same color, right? I'm going to get that big foliage brush again, I'm going to drag it down, get a lot of it loaded up into our, into our brush, pull it down in one direction like that, and then when we come over here, and maybe there's a big bit of tree or something back here, we're going to cover up a bit of that mountain. Not the whole thing, you want some of your shadow to be part of your mountain back here. And I'm going to cover this down, maybe it comes down there. Making this big old shape. That's when you come across this side. Remember what I said though, go back, get more paint. You want it to be super thick. Super thick, super dark. And that way all of our light colors will bounce off of that, right? Let's 
cover the edges over here. Maybe we have like a little bit of a get over here, you little sucker. We want these nice thick chunks of paint in though. Right, we'll get this little bit of forest back here. Maybe there'll be a little trail coming through like Bob likes to do. Wash that off. We're probably not going to use it again. Now we can get our liner brush, get a couple little dips into our paint thinner cup. All right, you can find these liner brushes amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. Right into that dark colored paint. We're just going to come back in here and just make a few little indications of a, of a branch here and there. Nothing too crazy, not a lot of detail. Very shadowy little branch. Maybe a couple pop out of the side over here. Just a little bit come out every which way. Doesn't matter. Just want it to be messy. You don't need it to be all the same or very, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Very even on each side, symmetrical. You don't need it to be symmetrical on the sides. You want it to look messy. Wash off this little guy. Then we're going to come in here. Maybe we got this real bright bit of tree top back in here. Just very lightly touching, remembering about the shape of the tree. Right? Got to have some shadow in there. some shadowing on our tree, but we have a little bit of color back in here like that. Down in there, a little bit like so. And why not, we'll grab that Van Dyke Brown, we have the, how do you say the Van Dyke Brown? Dark Sienna again, mix it with a little bit of white, pull it out, but we're not going to over mix it, right? And then let's come back in, and maybe we got this tree trunk that lives down in here. And we'll come and pull it to the side. Whoop. I gotta get me a new easel, you guys. This thing's starting to annoy me. Pull it to the side, and we'll go to this side. I know it might be hard for you guys to see, so I'm gonna try to be quick about it. Doesn't have to be straight up and down. Now we got this little section of tree branch up here. It's real sharp at the that. You can do this with a brush, you can do it with a knife, you can do it with whatever you're comfortable with, right? I like using the knife. It just helps you practice getting some use with that knife. Some artists can do a whole painting just with a knife. And it looks really neat. So, try something new, right? Try something new, try something hard. Just try. See what happens when you try. Touch that like so. Now we got this bit of darker forest. We got this lit up little tree over here. You can use a little friend. Maybe he's got a he's got another guy that comes out this way. Again, you can do this with your brush. You don't have to do it with a knife. But since we're already doing it, we might as well do it, right? Maybe this guy comes out over here. Nice little, little tree. Very sharp on the end. And not very symmetrical. You know, it's not going straight up. It's got a couple bends in it. And that's how you want it to be. You don't need it to be perfect. Maybe there's a branch that comes off over here from these different angles, and it's very thick in texture, right? The paint is sticking off of the canvas. Sticking off like that. Plus, the more you do it with the knife, you have all these different colors, different highlighted bits, and it just ends up looking really neat. It's almost like we get this V back in here. Brighter, a little bit thicker. There we go. We just 
don't want to overdo it. The more and more you mix it, the more it's going to turn into this same color brown, right? I really like that though. So let's keep going. Let's do another one. Maybe we could throw a little pine tree off right here. Let's try that. All right, we got all this thick paint anyway that's left over. And maybe off the side, we got this little guy just growing out over here. He wants to be with all of his friends. And his seed got blown way over here. Blending into these bushes down here, just like that, right? Give it a little bit of trunk. Again, you don't have to make it connect. Wash that brush off so it gets some real bright highlights on it. He's in the light of the moon over here. He really wants to stand out. Come down through that yellow and green. That's why I put them together on my palette so they stay very bright together. And we'll come up like this. And just on the one side, I'm going to sort of touch darker as we come down, right? Just like that. And that way you get a little bit of shadow, a little bit of light on either side of it. find these magic fly paints that we're using on amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art or go to happy little landscapes.com i have everything there uh, you'll be able to find links to all my online platforms my stores my amazon influence account but literally everything that i have you can find happy little landscapes.com which may be easier than all these shops slash different uh websites and stuff right it's looking really neat it's like we got this little bit of river that comes down and comes through here so we'll go back to our little half inch or our half round brush, a little mini size foliage brush. Pop this up on the lip right here and we're almost done, I guess. Be about an hour, a little bit over an hour. I'd like to give you guys a fair amount of details in my paintings. I hate doing these just paintings with not much to look at, right? I'm gonna come down again, get some of that yellow ochre. Love this yellow ochre color. We're gonna come in and just pop in a little bit of bush back here. Just a little, cover over our tree a bit. Change it up, I'm gonna get the pink. Different places, right? Leaving bits of dark between and around and everywhere else. A little bit of purple out here, maybe. Nice little purple bush. Come back with that magenta color. It's very nice and dark, beautiful little color. Right, come down in between, but leaving areas of dark you know, around your bushes. Get some of that orange and red mixed together. We can end up using the blue. Put that back up here so we can hold it. And then we'll come down and just very lightly touch, right? Not doing too much. Not going crazy. We don't want to cover the entire section either. always overlay these magic fly colors and that way you've got all these different bushes kind of mixed in together right that looks really neat I love the way this one has turned out so our last little bit of our sticks and twigs right holding all this stuff up very simple way to add branches just take your knife and just scrape it in and it's holding up all this stuff, all these little flowers and bushes that are back in here. Again, just don't overdo it, right? You can overdo it and it'll just look a little bit too nuts. So it starts to look awesome. No, we didn't do it in the highlight this tree over here, guys. How come no one told me? It's okay, though. We've got enough left. A little bit of yellow over over here, too. And this different colored tree. All right, come in touch as we go down, right? Not too crazy, not pushing too hard. The 
just adding a little bit of color to that tree over there. A little bit of color on our branches is all we're really looking for. And remember, the more we come down, the less color you need. And just like that, bam, got a finished painting. Got about five different greens in here, all these different beautiful colors. Showed you how to make a tree out of a, out of a palette knife. Right, nice bare, sticky bush, and uh, the moon is one of my favorite techniques. Beautiful mountains in this one. I really like how this one came out. So, thank you guys for watching, and uh, you know, hope you come back next week. We may be on a little hiatus. We're going to be moving, uh, moving houses, moving studios, so we might not be doing as many live videos or having as much content as usual. But we will be back, uh, especially around you know middle of May. We should be done and we'll be back making all these videos and stuff like that. So hope you guys enjoyed this one. I really like how it came out. It's been a long time since we've done like a lake sort of scene. So you guys take care. Uh, follow my pages. Go to happylittlelandscapes.com. You'll be able to find all of my social platforms and different channels. My YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, Amazon Live, you know, Amazon Influencer account, Etsy store, all that stuff. But Do you have no bugs? Thank you, my beautiful wife, for telling me. I forgot to sign the sucker. Start getting too ahead of myself. Let's see. And the canvas just moved on me. Fantastic. Okay. pages facebook.com slash happy landscape art you can find me on instagram at happy little landscapes youtube happy little landscapes uh, <laughs> amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art and if you want to buy this painting or any of my other paintings or my other you know products my merch right hats shirts all that stuff you can go to etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art hope you guys have a good day and uh, we will see you maybe next weekend maybe not but if not in a few weeks for sure and uh, I really appreciate everybody that's tuned in and watched me. And then I, you know, really love to see what you can do with these techniques and what kind of paintings you can create. So send them into facebook.com slash happy landscape art. I would love to see them. And until then, you guys take care. Have a great day. And uh, we're going to say goodbye. Bye, YouTube. See you in a bit. <laughs>